So, to, so the purpose today is to just um, discuss a bit about what we would be discussing later. Yeah. A, pre a preliminary discussion. Uh, no, I. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very brief. Um, very brief recording today. Yeah. So what I suggest is that, uh, like I said, of course we have plenty of things that we need to discuss. As a Christian versus a Muslim. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good. So um, yeah, would you, could we, um, are you recording now? Right. So um, we'll just start. Otherwise, we're going to be arguing about what we're going to be doing for the next five minutes. We'll just see how it goes. So um, I'm Paul, and you are. Arul. And um, you're a Christian and I'm a Muslim yeah. and uh, today we're going to talk, not for very long, you'll be glad to hear, um, about a discussion we're going to have in more detail another time to do with how we as Muslims and you as Christians view the scriptures and whether or not they've been changed and corrupted, is that...? No, so, so I, I, I'd like to put it this way, yeah. which is, I think the proposition would be are New Testament books reliable documents? Oh, I see. That's how I would put that. Because, so, okay. because I think I think Muslims and Christians view or approach scriptures in completely different ways. And when you say reliable, reliable is what? Reliable as documents, reliable as historical documents. As historical documents. As, as historical, reliable as history. As historical documents. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to start, or do, I, or do you want to defend that idea that all 29, 28, I mean, is it 28, 29 books in the Testament are rel historically reliable? So re reliable documents. So now, today, I, like I said, just an introduction, just, just to. Okay. So, so, so why do you think they're reliable? Um, let's get to that. Get to that. No, but, but before we get there, so, 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 what, what I'm saying is, Muslims and Christians approach scriptures in completely different ways. To a Muslim, yeah. If there is even one mistake in the Quran, it's not the word of God. True. To a Muslim. True. Because the Muslim idea is that it's somehow. Well, it's the speech of God Himself. So God doesn't make mistakes. So if a text claims to be God's very speech, which the Quran does claim in many places, actually contains falsehoods and errors, then it can't be the speech of God by definition. Because God is perfect and doesn't make mistakes. We all agree that God doesn't make mistakes. He is perfect. So that, that's why it's not because we have a high view of the Quran. It's because the Quran is the speech of God itself, Himself. That's why. Do you see what I mean? Whereas the, Quran, the New Testament doesn't make that claim. The New Testament doesn't say anywhere that it's the word of God or that it's inspired by God or that it's a revelation of God. Nowhere does the New Testament say that. So it's a belief you bring to the Bible, to the New Testament, and say, I believe this is the word of God. Although it never says that about itself. So your belief is external to the Bible, whereas the Quran itself bears witness that it is actually God's speech. And that, that's why that's what makes us Muslims, because we believe that. I happen to believe that is the case, and you happen to believe that is the Bible. The Bible doesn't claim that for your book, but it does actually claim it for our book. So it, at least on the grounds of its self-testimony, the Quran is clear, but your book is not clear, it doesn't even claim that status. So why do you think it's the Word of God, even though it doesn't claim to be the Word of God? No, but before we get there, okay. so, so the idea that it is God's speech and therefore can't have the mistakes, I yes. don't agree with. Um, so God, God makes mistakes? God can make statements which might be incorrectly recorded by people. No, no. Does, so, God, does God make mistakes is the question. God doesn't. Right. And well, therefore, and therefore, if you were Allah to conclude... Made a historical mistake. Uh, if you were to conclude straight from the so point... I not have comments from you, the other camera woman, not, not the... Uh, not so a, just focus, my brother, listen, my brother is making no, you're, strong you're points. You're and making comments. Brother, um, I am listening. This is Hatun, by the way, she's making comments as... As uh, usual. As usual. <laughs> brother, she, I am listening. They are just trying to change the she's, topic. She, she is not welcome on this discussion. Um, so as she you is saying, no. Paul, Paul, with yeah. all due respect, yeah. yeah. So Hatun is my friend. Right. Uh, brother, she, you don't need to. And so just, on, so. He so, just I mean, wants uh, to change the topic. He knows Quran so, so, changing the subject. Uh, so, 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 so the, my point is simple. Yeah. yeah. If we talk about the Islamic view of scriptures okay. first, yeah. which is completely different from okay. Christian view of scriptures, Should my point, Should my point is. Okay. So you made the point. You made. You asked me a question. Would God make mistakes? Yeah. I said no. He won't. We agree. He won't make any uh, erroneous statements, nothing like that. Absolutely. From there, for you to go to the conclusion, and therefore, Quran would not be erroneous, the point then is, somehow there is no intermediate step. God spoke, and then we have the Quran. So somehow, Quran is directly 
God's speech. So the, I think the problem okay. is in that point, directly God's speech. So that is Islamic view. I will, so maybe, maybe instead of saying there is a problem there, I should say that is where Christian view would di differ from an Islamic view. So if, according to your view, if God spoke and Quran therefore came about, then you have serious issues. The point is the moment you find even the minutest of problems, the entire theory that Quran is God's speech gets shattered. Not problems, but demonstrable errors, for example, that would... That no, would if it's God's speech directly, God can't make any mistake, big or small. No, I agree with you. I'm agree yeah, I think we actually agree with each other. I mean, we're quibbing, I'm coming over words here. Can I respond to that? My point is that we, we, we as, as believers, we believe in God. We believe that God sent messengers like Jesus, Muhammad, Moses, peace be upon them all. And that he sent revelation. So he sent the Torah to Moses. He sent the Injil, as we call it, the Gospel, to Jesus. Uh, he sent the uh, the Psalms to David, he sent another uh, revelation to Abraham and so on. And some of these revelations still exist, I, I believe. I, I believe the, the, uh, uh, the, the Psalms still exist, more or less. The Torah still exists, more or less. I know it's been corrupted, but it's there pro you know, substantially as it was. And th these are um, the actual speech of God. You talk to an Orthodox Jew, they don't believe that, that, that Moses inspired uh, the Torah. He actually gave the Torah to the, the laws to uh, to Moses, you know, on the tablets of stone, is actually God's God's handiwork directly. So um, we, we believe as Muslims that uh, we, we don't believe the New Testament is that revelation. It doesn't claim to be revelation, um, as I've repeatedly said. You, that's a point you want to address. Whereas uh, the other revelation does. Maybe even in your Bible has this revelation in other places. For example, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Jeremiah, um, uh, Hosea, Micah, and so on. These all, when they speak, they claim to be giving the actual words of God Himself, and, and this is this is the Quran's uh, way of this is God's way of giving revelation. So He actually gives the revelation to uh, to Isaiah, to Job, for example, or Jonah rather. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, and God spake. He said unto Jonah, and then you have the words in Jonah chapter one. Now I have no reason to disbelieve that 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 is the actual speech of God, and we have the same thing. The word of the Lord through the. Uh, um, Quran through uh, Gabriel, Jibril, came to Muhammad in the same way and commanded Muhammad to go and say, recite, read, recite. And he did. He memorized and recited to his companions, who then ultimately wrote it down. Collated together, we have the Quran today. So it is a, it is a revelation that's familiar to Christians and to Jews. There's even in your Bible, the book of Isaiah, the book of Jeremiah, I mentioned some of the examples. But there are bits in that, there are, uh, there are falsities we believe, man-made additions and changes that have been added. For example, Paul's letters don't claim to be revelation, they don't claim to be uh, directly the Word of God. And indeed, in places, he denies what he's saying is the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians 7, 12, he says, what I'm saying to you is not from God, it, it's from his own opinion. So he even denies it's the Word of God as a revelation. But the Quran never speaks that. It's always God speaking. It's God's actual speech. Just like we see God's speech in the, in the Torah, in the Old Testament itself. So that we do have a similar understanding of revelation. It's in your Bible. But your Bible has been mixed in with other things, man-made letters, man-made legends, fables, stories have been made up. Uh, we see some of them in the Gospels, and they're not revelation. They don't claim to be revelation. I think it's really important, if God is going to give us a revelation, He would say it's revelation. He's not just going to speak and say, well, I hope people recognize that these words come from God. No, He's going to declare these words come from God. So He says to Jonah, you know, the word of the Lord comes to Jonah. The word of the Lord comes to Isaiah. The word of the Lord comes to Muhammad. He comes to Jesus. The word of the Lord comes to Jesus. But a lot of the stuff in the Bible is not like that. There are books in the Bible that deny, for example, there's life after death. Ecclesiastes clearly says there is no life after death. Once you're dead, you're dead. That's false. We know it's false because of what Jesus taught, Muhammad taught, and the prophets taught. So we can judge. We have a criteria by which we judge what is false in that book you're holding, the, the Bible, and what is true. And that is God's pure, uncorrupted revelation. And the only book that is uncorrupted today, according to Muslims, is the Quran. And that's our criterion by which we judge what is true and what is false. And the Quran says that, as she says, use this Quran to judge what is false and what is true in your scriptures. I can read you the passage if you want. So Paul, um, so that's that's like, enough said. Like, over to you. Yeah, that's fine. So like, like I said, today I do not want to get into the details 
of the actual discussion. Today, I just wanted to agree on what we would be discussing possibly next week. All, all these issues? Yes, <laughs> yes, all these issues. So, so my contention, so your contention is, Quran and the Old Testament revelation is very similar. That's your contention, and the New Testament seems to be a bit different. My contention is, the Old Testament and New Testament revelations are very similar, and they are so unlike the claims concerning the Quran. In the Old Testament okay. and in the New Testament, when revelations were given through men, God never overrode the will of men, the lives of men, their own thought process was never overridden. Uh, a simple example, in Quran, people of Muhammad, according to your prophet, was commanded to just recite. You wouldn't find that in the New Testament, neither in the Old Testament. You gave the example of Jonah. I'd like to point out what happened. What happened? I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to tell you what happened in the case of Jonah. God asked Jonah to do a particular thing. Jonah ran away. And what did God do? God didn't immediately command him. God was trying to convince him. Convince him in all sorts of different ways. Somehow bring him to do his will. So, in other words, I think uh, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we see that pattern time and time again, where God interacts with the people whom He uses as His men, uh, the vessels of God. He, he would deal with them with respect. Many a times He would deal with them as if he, they were His friends, which is how He saw them. And this relationship you'd we would find consistently. Uh, so, so I, I'd like to contend on that first place. You, you, which you, is, I, I agree. You had uh, if, uh, the, Abraham is called the friend of God in the Quran. And so I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm, just like your I'm, 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 not, I'm not purely just talking about an explicit usage of the term friend. I'm talking about the entire dynamic, right through the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Are you going to address the point that the Bible, the New Testament itself, doesn't claim to be scripture? Yeah. That particular point is, uh, is the last point I'd like to address today, but not in detail. No, we, no. Were go we are going to discuss details next week, yeah. God strengthening. But there, I'm, I'm a bit surprised when you say uh, the New Testament doesn't claim to be uh, scriptures. Uh, right. uh, uh, we, we, we would discuss the Can details. Can you just give me one verse? So, so let him finish. We, 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 would, we would discuss the details. Sorry, can you not interrupt? Please? You are heckling. Oh. Let him finish, sir. Can you, can no, you, 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 sir, you're, you're you are heckling you. him. He listened to you well. Just are you listen. Are the judge, lady? Yes, I am. Come on, I am me. better than I'm Allah. Come on, come on. Excuse me. I am better than Allah. She says she's better than huh? God. Hear the better arrogance. than Allah. Better than God. Better than Allah. Allah is the word for God uh, in no, Arabic. No, no. You're so, no. Allah's woman claims to be better than God. Can you be the arrogant? Paul, Paul. So that's not... Brother, that's brother, brother. She just wants to She doesn't want you to speak, brother. The main point is... Between... Paul, Paul, between me and you, if we are going to have a proper conversation. Yep. I do not mind even disturbing. So that gentleman disturbed. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't call him out. Actually, he's a troublemaker, unfortunately. No, I don't. I don't. I don't respect that, Paul. If at all we are going to have a sensible conversation, which I am really hoping we are going we, to we have. We were having it until she interrupted. Yeah, no, Paul. You are not going to sir. Don't lie. She's interrupting If at all. If at all we are going to have a sensible conversation, my definition of a sensible conversation is not that anyone else would not speak, that is not my uh, definition. My definition is even if Hatun speaks, even if he speaks, anyone else, Abbas, anyone could speak anytime. Of course, it won't be very helpful, but 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 all of us are friends and friends well, with each other. So, and not, therefore, we're not friends. And, and so therefore, I'm not a friend of Hatun's. So you Jesus might not be, but I am. And therefore, I'm better than God. Yes. Is not my better friend. than Allah. Paul, Paul. I am better I am, judge than Allah. Hatun, Hatun is my I'm friend. How can I be friends, friends with someone Paul. who claims to be better than God? Paul, I'm, I'm, I am friends I'm, with her. And therefore, I can listen to her. She just does it. Brother, he just doesn't want to listen to you. That's fine. In regards to the second point, just an introduction today. I don't want to ask. Argue about did that today. Did you have a preliminary answer to my point? The preliminary the answer. Does not claim to be scripture. The preliminary point is quite clear in the church. The New Testament documents were clearly the ones which have been received, not the ones which haven't been included in the Bible. The ones which have been received and included and included in the New Testament have been uh, received as the word of God, scriptures, uh, as Paul puts it, breathed by the Holy Spirit of God. Breathed by the Spirit, inspired by the Spirit, uh, and Peter uses the term scriptures and so on. So, so the point is, among the Christians, among the first century church, all of the uh, documents in the New Testament um, were received as the Word of God. So the only difference, though, is the, in the first century church. Now, 
Yes, so first century church, the point we... So let's put it this way. So this is what I'd like to do today, maybe end with that maybe. So we are going to discuss the proposition. Well, can, can, can I just respond to that just briefly before we end then? We just called, remember my contention was the New Testament itself does not claim to be scripture. I was not concerned with what later Christians may or may not have thought. And by the way, there was great disagreement about uh, amongst the early Christians in the early centuries about which books make up the New Testament. We know that. If you look at Eusebius, uh, in his ecclesiastical history, he's known as the, the father of church history. He lived in the second and third centuries. He, he says certain books in the New Testament are actually uh, not part of scripture, like 2 Peter, which today is seen as a forgery by virtually all scholars on earth, including Christian ones. They see that as a forgery, even though it claims to be by Peter. So it's not the case that in the first century, Christians just accepted these texts. In fact, it was a long process of, um, of acceptance of some and rejections of others. The Codex Sinaiticus in the British Museum, for example, the earliest complete New Testament in the world has books in it that you don't accept as uh, are not in your Bible. They're not accepted today, like the Epistle of Barnabas and, and the, the Didache, for example. So the canon of Scripture, the books in the New Testament, has not has never been agreed upon by Christians. Even today, there's some Orthodox denominations uh, in Ethiopia that have a different canon of the New Testament than you do. And the New Testament canon is also the disagreements about it even today between Catholics and Protestants and Orthodox and so on. So the Bible has never been agreed upon by, by Christians, even today. The, unlike the Quran, which from the very beginning has always been 114 surahs, 114 chapters, have been agreed true. upon uh, well, well, interview, uh, by, by the Muslims. Uh, and there's never been any dispute about yeah, it being the word of God. Lastly, Paul, I think, when he wrote his letters, did not think he was writing scripture. He did not think he was writing text that would be on the same level as the Torah. We know this because of, of what he says. He says, for example, at the beginning of one uh, letter, I think it's 1 Corinthians, he talks about some people have been baptized. He mentions them by name. Then he says, oh, no, 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 I got that wrong. It was somebody else. Now, that's not God speaking. God doesn't uh, uh, have a lapse of memory and then say, oh, I, I just corrected myself. It was someone else. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he denies that what he is writing, what he is teaching is from God. God doesn't say what I'm teaching you is not from God. God. It doesn't make sense. God teaches the truth from God. So I don't think Paul's letters bear any characteristic of Scripture. They, they look like casual letters. Paul's letters to the Philippians is a casual letter, just written briefly off the, off the hoof, seemingly. Romans is about the only one that comes close to being a theological work. So they, they don't claim to be Scripture. The, the Gospels don't claim to be inspired by God. Uh, either. So I would expect uh, Muslims, when we're looking at Revelation, we expect it to say it's Revelation. If it's from God, it should say it's from God. We shouldn't just be able to pass off any old text and say, oh, well, this is for the Word of God. Even when it doesn't say that, and it's written by human beings. Paul is a sinner, you agree? He said he was the chief of sinners. And this chief of sinners wrote letters where what he says in some parts are not from God, and you venerate this as the word of God, but he says he's a sinner and he writes letters to people. That's not revelation for Muslims. We expect it to have the characteristic and the authenticity of scripture from God. And that it doesn't pass the test in my view. So this would be kind of the issues we you can yes. respond to. So, so the issues we will talk about is, I'm going to contend for the fact that every Christian book was written by a sinner. It wasn't just Paul. Every single one was a sinner, exactly. including me. Yeah. And uh, going by that logic, no one could write anything on behalf of God. So anyway, point is, I clearly see there being a different view as to what as to what the definition of scriptures is. Uh, like based on the last few points you raised, my point, my contention, or hopefully not hopefully next week is going to be. Uh, I don't think this is the word of God purely because it say, says, oh, by the way, I am the word of God. That is a simple way of finding out if something is the word of God, if it is true. Ooh. But there is also, there are complex ways of concluding uh, that particular thing. So in other words, the reasoning for considering the New Testament and the Old Testament to be scriptures is actually a bit a bit more complex than in the way you are suggesting, apart from maybe the couple of no, tablets. I, I do agree with you. The so, historical process but is finish your point, please. I love so, to so rest of your so, point. So point is, so if we can maybe next week, Excuse me, sir. I, I don't want you to make umbrella statements no, no, there. She's intervening. You're intervening. It's the she, 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 she is. She, 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 she is making a point about the point itself. He is making a point about the person, which I don't like. If he continues doing that, and if he's with you, 
Brother, uh, I know you can say all sorts of things, my dear friend. I want you to be sensible if you want to respect God. Hey, so, up what you so the point is, I'd like, I I'd, 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 I'd like, so in other words, yeah. God strengthening next week, the discussion would include things like how do Christians see scriptures? How do Muslims see scriptures? In the Christian view of scriptures, in the Christian view of scriptures, or basing uh, on the Christian view of scriptures, do we think this is reliable scriptures? That's not history. No, even as scriptures, in the Christian view of scriptures, is this reliable? Is one thing we can see. As scriptures. So, in the Christian view of scriptures, in the Islamic view of scriptures, it's different. Now, similarly, I'd like to also, at some stage, discuss, in the Islamic view of scriptures, going with that definition, would Quran be scriptures? Is something we need to discuss. Obviously, it's a tautology. It is. But it's not a tautology. Tautology is something which end up, which would end up proving not claiming so merely because you claim it doesn't mean it is true so merely because you have a definition and you call something as according so so you claim this is the definition of scriptures and you think Quran follows that pattern it immediately doesn't mean it is true yeah, I, I agree with you. I have not proven just because so, the Quran claims it to be from God doesn't mean that it is. And therefore, it is not a tautology. I, 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 therefore, it is not a tautology. I, I, I misunderstood That's what you were saying. Yeah. No, you're right. I, I've not substantiated the truth claims of that. I've simply, uh, so I've simply described what it says of itself. And I just want to make one point here. There are books in the Bible that are just like the Quran in the way they present themselves. Uh, Paul, example, can I can I please suggest? I don't want to get into the details no, today. I want to make this clear. Well, when we talk about the difference between the Christian and the, and the Muslim scriptures, it's not that the the Bible has nothing like the Quran. There are books which were originally independent of the canon, like Jeremiah, like Isaiah, and so Jonah, and so on, which are Quran like in their mode of revelation. What I'm saying is there are also books in this, the, the Bible is a library of books written by uh, many different people over a thousand years. It contains revelation, it contains letters, history, myth, it contains all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff as well. So I'm not saying, their book is not all of one kind. There are books in it which are just like the Quran. There are many books in the Old Testament just like the Quran. There are other things like Paul's letters which are nothing like the Quran because they don't claim to be revelation even. So yes, of course, it's not that you have no, nothing in your Bible that's like the Quran. There are things like the Quran in your Bible, but there's other stuff that's been added in, that's man-made, that's erroneous, that's myth, that's not worthy of believing in. When Ecclesiastes says there is no life after death, and that when we're dead, we are dead, I say that is not revelation because God would never say that. But do you want to just yeah? summarize what so, you are so, going to discuss so this is again? Why, because it's going but, on. But when, I, I, when, when, I, when I, I, she's not interrupting and seeking over us. So when Isaiah says, and the word of the Lord says, that is the speech of God as exactly the same so Paul, as Muhammad's revelation when he said, God says to Muhammad's speech. Yes. Speak. Aren't you ashamed I, of and, well, so, so I think there are there are Quran-like revelations in the Bible, but they're mixed in with other man-made things which we're not required to believe in as Christians. So, so, far, so if we, it's going to get yeah. Paul, so 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 with with Paul, without without getting into the details, without getting into the details. So so we agree. We discuss about the view of scriptures of Christians of Muslims. We, we then examine if the Quran stands up to the definition of view of scriptures by Muslims and similarly and the Bible if it would stand up to the scrutiny of the Quran. It's the same as many parts of the Bible. Number three, I'd, I'd also like to make the claim that you would find nothing like the Quran in, in template in the Bible. In the Bible, in the Bible, uh, the, the witness accounts, the testimony. Not Isaiah, not Jeremiah, not Micah. We, we would discuss the details. We would discuss the details. Okay. We would discuss the details okay. in, the, in the coming week. I look forward weekend. to it. I look forward to it. Yeah, so, so, so I, I, I'm going to contend that also. If Quranic mode of revelation is a revelation in the Bible, I would be very worried. Yeah. But, so that's that. Well, you should be glad because then it shows that Islam has something enormously in common with your beliefs. And no, no, no. I, I would be. I would. I would be. I would be. No, no, no. I would be very worried because I would be very worried because clearly the Quranic mode of revelation is not satisfactory at all for a thinking man to give up his life to follow God. I wouldn't go with that. God but, speaks to but, Moses. God speaks to Muhammad. God speaks to. But in 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 a, in a completely unlike man, unlike to Quran manner. Uh, speak. We will go through the details. Isaiah was terrified when God spoke to Isaiah. We, we would. 
I'm not talking about the terif being terrified alone. I'm talking about even more fundamental points later. We'll get to the details. Uh, I look forward to coming. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that and your point about New Testament not being not claiming to be scriptures. We'll get into that because again, that that I think comes from the uh, comes from the wrong thinking. You 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 shouldn't bring the Islamic view to Christian scriptures. You shouldn't. No, it's a Jewish view as well. It's a Jewish view. The Jewish view. I'm quite happy with. I'm going to contend the New Testament is well, going to stick to the is Jewish view. Claim to be, Christians call it the Word of God, but it doesn't claim to be Jew, the Word of God. Jew, Jewish. The New Testament would be very similar to the Old Testament template of what scriptures is. We will go through that also uh, when we Wonderful speak. Wonderful stuff. Good. I look forward to it. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we can have another cameraman because I think she will interfere. Uh, no, uh, Hatton is, a, is, a, is an unstable element. Uh, who will, no, Paul, Paul. Who will interfere. Paul. Sir, Paul, no, with all. what is your view on homosexual Muslims with the Dawa gang sets? Because gonna, since you are seriously dying to harass and hackle me and insult me, seriously. I, I would love to hear what do you think about Dawa gangs are saying about homosexuals? What do I think about who? Dawa who? Dawa gangs. I don't, I, I don't understand. Dawa gangs. Dawa gangs? I don't, I don't even know what that means. Oh, no, just I, no, look I, around. They're all around the world. It's all, there is a meaning to the cameras here. <laughs> Am I part of it? I, I, I don't know what Dawa gangs means. Can you explain yourself, please, in clear English? What time, what time did you want to discuss next week? Oh, uh, three o'clock. Uh, too late, too early. Three, it's going to be three. a nice hot day apparently. The weather forecast uh, is really good. Actually. I'm curious, am I part of the gang? What does the what gang, gang mean? What about me? I'm curious. Alright. Well, what gang is this, Hatton?